this episode of History Hunters, Sarah and I will take you on a tour of the old community of Tuolumne, east of Sonora, California, and tell you about its link to logging and mining over a century ago. We'll also visit the historic cemetery and tell you a little bit about some of the folks who are buried there, as well as the grave sites that served as a backdrop for a 1980s Michael Landon TV episode. So welcome to this episode of History Hunters. We're in Tuolumne, California. It's an older community in Tuolumne County, just above Sonora. And we're gonna take a look at some of the historical aspects of this town, as well as the cemetery of many of the pioneers who helped to build this community way back in the 1800s. The Tuolumne Veterans Memorial Hall. Very colorful little motif above the door. Erected in 1936 as a joint project of the Federal Public Works Administration in the county of Tuolumne. Layers of concrete poured. It's almost had an Art Deco look to it as well. You couldn't tell it, but on this spot back in 1901 was the turn back in. It burned in 1924. It was an opulent hotel marketed as a stopover for people before heading over to Yosemite via the railroad. There you go, some of FDR's money spent right there in that building, 1936. This community was known for the West Side Lumber Company, just outside of town. And here's one of the restored fire engines. It's here on permanent display, right here in the town square. It's just a relic from the past. The Heisler was named the William Crocker, built by the Stearns Manufacturing Company of Erie, Pennsylvania in 1899. From 1900 to 1903, it worked for the Hatch Hatchy and Yosemite Valley Railroad. The Heisler II played a vital role in the timber production for Westside Lumber Company, working the woods and the switchyard. It recorded more than a half a century of logging service in the hills of Tuolumne County. This is one of the last pieces of Westside history in Tuolumne County. Number two. I think my kids have played on this before. Now they don't want you playing on it. Got it fenced off here. Presents a risk liability. You can't climb on it anymore. But I've been on this engine before. This engine is certainly out of commission and will never be put in service again. I can guarantee you that. Here's the old west side lumber tracks, which have been abandoned. So I wanted to stop and look at this old bridge. It runs over Turnback Creek. I'm no expert, but I'd say it probably dates back to the 1920s, maybe the 30s. It would have been the bridge that Gary Cooper crossed on his way from Sonora to Tuolumne to film High Noon in the fall of 1951. You see the rebar used in this concrete bridge. It's a good thing it was put out of commission. Nothing lasts forever. They're wet and it, these rocks are slip. Slip. <laughs> slip. The rocks are slick. Slip. Yeah. On the other side of this fence was the Westside Lumber Company. It was a tourist attraction that kind of centered on the lumbering and the railroad. And I think there were boat rides on the, the mill pond. Westside Lumber Company was founded in 1898 to log about 55,000 acres of timberland outside of the town. Now, originally the town was called Somerville and was renamed Carter's on December 14, 1888. And in 1909, it was renamed Tuolumne. We're right here at the junction where Twain Hart goes off this direction, Sonora goes off this direction. This is the Geographical Center of the East Belt Placer Gold Rush, 1856 to 1857 was here. First white settlers, the Franklin Summers family arrived in 1854 and built a log cabin half a mile west. There he's got some gold in there, I hope. You may recognize this church. It's the same church that they filmed High Noon at. I did a video on that a couple years ago. You might want to check that out. 
but I thought it was kind of ironic that right here next to this church, which is now St. Joseph's Catholic Church, at one time was Hub Saloon, right on its border. Can you imagine that? I'm sure that did not sit well with the church officials. That's crazy to think. Hub Saloon was right here. Corner of Bay and Pine Streets over here. It's a very much older part of town. That building over there was actually used in a Michael Landon production of Highway to Heaven, used as a sheriff's office. This is a replica of the hose cart that was restored in March 1974 by the Tuolumne Hose Company. Number one, in memory of those who fought fire and originated the first volunteer fire department in the town site of Somerville in 1885. Looks like it's been pretty beat up since 1974. This is the Joseph Lord House, built around 1875 in the Italianate style. It is the oldest surviving house in the Tuolumne community. Miraculously, the house escaped the fires of 1903 and 1905. So what we're gonna do right now is head over to Carter Cemetery, and I'm gonna talk to you and hopefully find some graves of some historical people. We're driving by, and guess what? A horse. Oh, a horse. A horse. Oh, poor you. There's a horse. No, it's just that <laughs> you're always into animals. Well, you're into this sign. Hi, Pony. Look at this, Tommy. I like their noses because it's soft. I don't have any food. No, you can't. You can't bite me. Sorry. You see his little teeth? And they're not little. Well, <laughs> he almost got my thumb. Over there's where we need to go and check out the cemetery. Carter Cemetery. The first documented burial is that of Silas Gibbs, eight days old, who died January 2nd, 1860. He was the fourth child of William Gibbs and Mary Frances Summers Gibbs, sister of Franklin Summers, for whom the original town site of Summersville was named. Among those resting here are Native American Miwok Indians, members of the pioneer families, immigrants employed by the lumber industry, and veterans from many wars. That one's old. Andrea. 1919. Locked. This one's still a whole just wood box. It's a child, huh? Because it's little. Might. How come these ones? That's weird. They, it must just be the money. Well, if you were really poor and you had yeah. all you could afford was these. And that's what that is right there, right? Wonder how much that yeah. cost back in the day. Wright. G.W. Wright. Sounds like someone famous, doesn't 1833 it? 1833 to 1910. The Wright brothers? That's not them. Collier. Harvey Leroy Collier. That sounds famous. He, did, he didn't live very long. That was alive in 1873. Whole bunch of Wrights over here. Whole bunch of Colliers. Look, 1885. Oh, that one's cool. Wait. This is G.A. Wright, G. and up there is G.W. Wright. There's a lot of graves here of veterans from the 30s. I'm not aware of any military action, but this guy, U.S. Navy fireman Elmer Milton Levitt, died October 7, 1939. There are so many military service personnel that never get the recognition that they deserve. So if this is not the Lord, it's Joseph Lord. He was owner of the house that we just visited a little bit earlier. He was born April 13th, 1830. Looks like he was a native of Cornwall, England. He died here July 22nd, 1908. And his wife, who died 
little bit later, 1914. She was also a native of Cornwall, England. Here's a cool little marker for, looks like William Gibbs. He died September 9th, 1895. He was 69 years old. In memory of Lizzie Baker, who died in 1886 at the age of 33, gone but not forgotten. So when you visit these cemeteries, you realize how short life is, especially back in those days, in the 1800s, when there was a lack of medical um, technology and medicine. There are so many people here who died in their teens, their 20s, their 30s, and even their 40s, and I still consider 40s to be young, especially as I get older next year. But actually, this year, going to be 60. Crazy. Here's the Carter plot. But look at this, this little wire company emblem here. This is where the Carters are buried. These are the founders of the town. Charles Carter, he ran a general store and was the first postmaster of this town. Mr. Carter saw his fair share of bloodshed at Long Gulch in a store that he owned there before he came to Somersville. Charles purchased the general store in Long Gulch, which was the site of many community meetings held by local miners and one night in 1857, the topic of discussion was whether or not to allow Chinese into the area. The debate raged for hours into the night and ended when several miners went outside, got their guns, and proceeded to shoot up the store. One eyewitness said it looked like a slaughterhouse. The assault left one man dead and several wounded. And Charles later moved his entire operation to Summersville, just a few hundred yards from the site of the new Eureka Mine. He built a new store on the northeast side of the town plaza located on what is now the north corner of Buchanan Mine Road and Carter Street. Here's his wife, Sarah J. Carter. She lived from 1842 to 1908. So it looks like she married a much older man. Here's the grave of John Brown, 1825 to 1910, native of New York. So there's another reason why I brought you to Carter Cemetery, and that's because in 1984, whoops, there's a hole here, Michael Landon and Victor French shot a scene from Hive to Heaven. It was called the Plain Death episode. It was shot right here, and it involved an episode in which Mark Gordon, playing by Victor French, lost a friend to a drug transaction that took place actually in Tuolumne County, and it talked about the evils of drug abuse. Thank you, Jonathan. So in this overview of the scene shot from up there, Michael Lennon and Victor French are standing right over here. And in the background over here, past this obelisk over here, you'll see that there was a structure that was back here when they were filming in 1984. It's not here anymore, but you'll see that the characters are standing right over here on the other side of that grave for Mr. Stagg. So as Michael Lennon and Victor French are going back to the car, Victor French turns to Michael Landon and says, There'll never be a time in this country when I put drugs away forever. If they're not, there may not be a country to wonder about. And then they walk directly in front of this grave plot right here. Now, I was curious about the tall marker that's off to the left side in the screenshot of Michael Landon and Victor French, and it's this one here for Homer F. Barnett, 1860 to 1912. Here rests a woodsman of the world. This marker here also appeared in the TV show. It's of Earl Stagg, 1887 to 1918. Landon would often use areas that in towns where he was familiar with, and it uh, was the mountain cemetery look that he was looking for. This headstone here of Fred A. Fisher of Company A of the 58th New York Infantry saw them do their TV performance. This tombstone also made it on TV. In the background, it's of Gus Anthony Burke West. He lived from 1886 to 1913. And I believe this one was also featured in the background. Solberg, John P. Solberg and his wife Carrie, both died in 1914. <laughs> right over here in this veterans area, 
It is a grave that I wanted to find. William John Carra died in 1896. He was the son of William and Elizabeth of Cornwall, England. He came to America with his brother Harry in about 1875 and was a miner by profession. While Harry went to the Nevada mines, William went to the Washington mine in Mariposa County. And in 1881, he married Elizabeth Marie Marshall. By 1885, the couple had moved to Sonora and then over here to Tuolumne, which at that time is called Somerville. He was put in the grave early at the age of 44 because of his exposure as a minor. He contracted silicosis of the lung and he died on October 4th, 1896. At the time of his death, he was employed at the new Albany mine in Somerville. He left behind two children named Alfred and Edith. This house here probably dates back to the 1880s or 1890s. Typical of the houses that are around here. This building here looks like a house, but it also looks like an old school. But it's actually the Episcopal Church that used to be here operating in Tuolumne. So opposite this really cool house over here is this memorial marker for Reed Sanitarium. I guess this was the site for a, basically a hospital back in, I guess it was in the 1920s. Right here on this lot is where the, the sanitarium was. It looks like it was three stories. And the third story was destroyed by fire. It was reconstructed into a two-story facility. By 1929, Dr. Reed had retired and the sanitarium was converted into a boarding house. So over there, that building is the Oddfellows Hall, established in 1918, as you can see. And there's the Loggers Club, which was the bar used in that episode of Highway to Heaven with Michael Landon. It was Sid's place, a place where the town bad boys were captured here in a midnight scene. Believe it or not, Tuolumne even had its own movie theater. It's right here, and it looks like it's seen its better days. So way up there at the top of the facade, I think it reads 1946 Fireman's Hall. I think something that gives towns like this flavor is buildings like that that still remain from 1946. It hasn't been removed yet. It still has the theater marquee on it. Look at that. I can't make that out. Tuolumne, Tuolumne Gallery Theater. Look like it had neon. Kind of see little pieces of broken neon tubes. And over here, they would have advertised the films that show here. Been walled off. Looks like one of the local artists put Good Night Moon. It's for sale if you want to buy it. I did run across a picture of a group of men outside the theater that had some pretty interesting information because the two spaces on either side of the door contained businesses. The one on the left was Cleo's Beauty Salon, and the one on the right was the Tuolumne Variety Store, which was a five and dime, as they used to call them, because things were that cheap. And there was a movie poster on the wall for the Abbott Costello comedy, The Wistful Widow of Wagon Gap, which was released in 1946. Right next to the old theater over there. It's this very quaint old, looks like a country store that's closed down. Sarah, it looks like she's found some place to explore back here. <laughs> she's sneaking in. That's typical of Sarah. Look at in here. You know what kind of reminds me of? The secret garden. Well, when you pass through the doors and it opens up into... Wow. But this isn't kept. The old theater looked like they had a fire in here one time. Now it's just a pit for vandals. By the looks of it, projection room would have been up there. Huh? It looks like a one projection screen. Projection would have been up there. Turn around. The projector would have been up here. The projector would have been up there and it would right. have projected over there. Right, that's what I said. One screen. I can honestly say that I've never been in an abandoned movie theater with no roof, just the walls. The thorns are bad. What did you think of that? It's cool. 
Look, that was the emergency escape right there. They blocked that up. This would have been the stairs. This is definitely a throwback to a different era. It's almost like, uh, reminds you of the Christmas story. Ralphie could have slugged Scud Farkas out here on the old store building. So I think that's going to do it for this episode of History Hunters. We want to thank you for joining us on this tour of Tuolumne, California, as well as Carter Cemetery. We would always appreciate a comment and a like. And if you could subscribe to this channel, we would love to have that happen as well. Thanks so much.